Hello everyone and welcome to the Anvils of Connor Patreon page. Today I will just be going through a very quick tutorial for sculpting soft armour. Um, specifically this is with, uh, with power armoured uh, troops or terminator armour. This in, in, in actual fact is a Mark III, what is called the Cuirass uh, Mark of Armour by Tortuga Bay Studios. By now you'll know that I'm a pretty big fan, alright? And uh, in order to add a little bit more dynamism to the model, I've uh, used some copper wire and I've used the technique that we've covered already on this page uh, for pinning and, uh, and drilling and all that kind of jazz. And, uh, and I've just opened that up ever so slightly. Now, I will always pin everything. <laughs> no. I'll always um, blue tack pads to models uh, because in, in this instance, I always paint the Death Guard pads green and the armor itself in a cream color. Um, so just to get that ease of access as well. Um, now we probably won't actually need to fill that at all because the pad will be completely covering it and obscuring that gap. So a little bit lazy, uh, but if we can get away with it um, without anyone being able to notice, that is not a problem at all. Okay, so we've got that gap there. We'll talk through very quickly through the tools that you need today. So you'll need some fresh water. Um, you don't want any bits and bobs bobbing around in there, whether it's plastic offcuts from, from using a scalpel or from clippers, or even um, a bit of plastic dust or resin dust from using um, a set of files, for example. Now we've got our trusty scalpel with a brand new 10A um, non-sterilized surgical blade, okay? absolute essential part of any model maker's toolkit. Naturally, as I say every single time, just be very, very careful when using this because it cuts deep, all right? Uh, and, you know, don't really want to go to the hospital if you can help it. Um, I've got a size two angle chisel by Royal Sovereign Limited. All right, this one has seen better days, as you can see. Even made it a bit, a bit of a sawn off tool for when I go uh, Go abroad and pack some hobby bits and pieces. Not even abroad, but just go on little little hobby trips. Little trips, but I managed to get hobby into, depending on who I'm with. Um, and this is the medium density. So this is the grey, okay, which I find really good for working with uh, with green stuff. And then I've got green stuff itself, okay, um, which you can pick up very easily uh, on um, on a whole manner of different hobby supply websites. Uh, or even an, an eBay as well. I won't go into mixing the green stuff itself. I'm not going to teach you guys how to, how to suck eggs. I might later down the line, um, if required, um, do something along those lines. Um, but I'm going to mix some green stuff off, uh, off screen, off camera, and then, uh, and then we'll just go through the process of applying the green stuff to the model and then adding some detail. All right, so I'll see you in a second. So off camera, mixed up this little ball of green stuff you can see here. Um, not an awful amount, a little bit goes a very long way in actual fact. Um, I usually mix about 60% blue to about 40% yellow to get this nice sort of rich green colour. Okay, That just means that it will be nice and malleable, it will work very well with my tools, but also it won't be too flexible or rubbery once it's cured. Okay, um, It's really important to mix it nice and consistently. Uh, with plenty of water so it doesn't start sticking, especially to all these little uh, nicks and crazes I've given myself just by using the scalpel, all right, or other modeling tools. So essentially, water is gonna be very handy here. Um, some people like spit, some people like to use Vaseline, um, but I think both of those may leave a little bit of a residue that just needs to be taken care of before painting the model, all right? So I'm just gonna take a little tiny piece off here now the scalpel is particularly handy because we can use it to work out precisely how much material we need. Okay, so hopefully the camera is going to play ball. So usually I just create a little little sausage of green stuff. All right, so I can sort of work out precisely how much I need. Now remember this is a brand new scalpel blade. I've just dipped it in the water there, very gently. It's going to cut the green stuff there, all right? So I think this is probably going to be an all right amount to use. And you want to kind of taper it off at either end because of the shape of the gap that we've made by posing the model. It's going to be sort of require more material in the middle, essentially. So what I'm going to do is just very gently 
apply that there. Dip my tool in a little bit of water. And you can always remove excess just by wiping it on your, your thumb. Your thumb is also a really handy part of any model maker's toolkit. Now it's very warm here in London, so it's about 33 degrees. I'm sure if I have any international patrons they might laugh at that. But we don't really have an awful lot of um, air conditioning, okay, unless it's in shops or hotels or banks or whatever, so uh, I'm kind of um, sweating a little bit, which is actually quite handy for being um, able to remove green stuff from my palm. Um, but also, it just means if I do have any excess water, because water will affect how well green stuff binds to any particular surface, especially if that surface is quite flat. But um, basically, it will dry nice and quickly, so it's not the end of the world if I end up um, getting too much water on there. So it looks like we need a little bit more there. You can add a little bit more to so that other little section that I, I cut off. Always just make sure your hands are nice and clean as well, so you're not picking up any any dust or anything like that, uh, modelling or otherwise. And then again, just wipe that off there. And you can probably, there we go, starting to look like a good amount of green stuff in there. So you properly fill that gap and represent that lovely soft arm up, it's very iconic um, in, uh, in power armor, just space marine armor in general. Okay, so I'm just going to use a wetted tip of the blade. Again, I will always try and be as mindful as possible about the, the pointy or cutty bit of the blade. And then just use my tool again here just to kind of smooth it down. make sure we've got it's all consistent remember it's all machined with great levels of of commitment and uh, to very specific measurements and, and whatnot characteristics so it's not cobbled together it's not sort of black shield style armor it's um it's been made uh, on mass granted but to uh, very high standards Okay, the Mechanicum of Mars, they don't, they don't fool around. Well, the Mechanicum full stop, so you'll have little forge welds here and there, um, making specific patterns and all this kind of stuff. Um, right, so we've got a good amount there. All right, now what I'm going to do is just use the blade. All right, I usually start in the middle. Okay, but you want to create these little ribs. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. So sort of working behind the camera, so. Right, so that's a nice little place marker, okay? So we want to be able to put probably two on either side, one or two um, ribs, as it were. I mean, on the Tortuga Bay, they're quite, they're quite chubby. So we want to just emulate that texture with, uh, with our work here, all right? And they're just little pilot lines to begin with. Okay, so that's a nice little sort of parallel line. You do want them to be slightly curved if you can help it, just, just from the anatomy of the armour, the way that it works. So we're going to do the outside one now. And taking your time. All right. Now, remember, I've been doing this for about a decade now so it may look fairly effortless but just keep practicing you never know how long it will take and um, it's a very good good process to get into it really allows you to create some very interesting poses for your marines 
All right, that's just that inner one there. Just again, make it look nice and neat. So there we go. You can, if you want to, just gonna give you guys a really nice view of that. So you can, if you want to, go back and just push in the indent a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure it's actually necessary here. It's be painted black either way, all right? And some of it will be covered with the shoulder pad. And naturally, if you do go back, you wanna be very careful that you're not going to uh, mess up your, your previous work. Um, very big point with green stuff, actually. The amount of times that I've pushed a thumb into some detail that has taken me some time to, to sculpt and just wasted a load of time. So just be very mindful, you know, do what you have to. But I'm gonna leave this, okay? Um, because I think that's it's deep enough. That'll be defined enough for when I get around to painting the model. Um, so yeah, so just see if I can zoom in a little bit closer. All right. So that's how to sculpt um, soft armor on uh, on Space Marines. All right. Until next time. Uh, this is Jack from the Anvils of Connor. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, happy, happy hobbying.